Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're taking our first official, our first real look at Windows 11 performance and I'll be doing so with some Intel 10th and 11th gen processors. For now though, I am going to avoid testing with any AMD CPUs and I'll do so until Microsoft publicly rolls out the Ryzen 3 L3 cache performance patch. Now, there are a few reasons why I wanted to test Windows 11 performance using Intel's 10th and 11th gen CPUs, namely of course to see how much difference there is when compared to Windows 10, but also I'd like to establish some baseline data, and then I'll be able to come back in a few weeks and do it all again with Elder Lake, which is meant to benefit from scheduling updates made with Windows 11. But as far as I'm aware, 10th and 11th gen core series processors should deliver comparable performance using either Windows 10 or Windows 11, but of course, as always seems to be the case, I have found conflicting reports, some claiming that Windows 11 is much faster, while others suggesting it's much slower. In an effort to find out what the real story is, I'll be testing over half a dozen configurations using the flagship Intel Core i9 11900K, along with the entry-level Intel Core i3-10105F, which is actually a refreshed 10th gen part featuring four cores with eight threads. The idea here is to see if there are any performance changes using either low-end or high-end hardware. Now, along with a fresh install of Windows 10 and Windows 11, I've also included a configuration based on a Windows 10 fresh install that was then upgraded to Windows 11. And I should note that by fresh install, I mean that it was a recent install of Windows made on a brand new SSD, which is then loaded with all the applications we require for testing and diagnosing performance. So by that point, I've installed as many or really as many applications and games as most of you would have installed at a given time. Helping make all this testing possible is Team Group, who graciously sent over a pair of their 8TB MP34Q M.2 NVMe SSDs. That's right, these tiny SSDs offer 8TB of high-speed storage. And I've got one for the Windows 10 install as well as one for Windows 11. And this has afforded me the ability to go back and forth to check results and in some instances, even triple check results. Now these drives offer a read throughput of up to 3.4 gigabytes per second with writes as fast as three gigabytes per second. And I'll be including some SSD results towards the end of the video. Now the last configuration I've included is one with virtualization based security or VBS enabled. By default, my Windows 11 install disabled this feature, but it has been reported that on some desktop and laptop PCs that VBS is enabled by default and can tank gaming performance by up to 25%. It should be noted that VBS isn't a new feature and it's certainly not exclusive to Windows 11. In fact, you can enable it on Windows 10, but I've never come across a single configuration where it is enabled by default. It's always been something you have to manually enable. So to check if VBS is enabled, simply run the Windows search feature and type msinfo32 and hit enter. Towards the bottom of the system info, you'll find virtualization based security and it'll either say enabled or not enabled. Then to toggle it on or off, simply enter the Windows security menu, navigate to the device security tab and under the heading core isolation, you'll find the ability to toggle VBS on or off. And after a simple system reset, those changes will be in effect. I don't feel as though this is a feature most desktop users will need or want to enable, and I believe this is especially true for gamers, but I've run a separate configuration with an enable just so you can see the performance impact. Also, for those of you wondering, VBS is an enterprise class feature designed to secure corporate PCs by creating an isolated and secure region of memory from the normal operating system. Windows can use this virtual secure mode to host a number of security solutions, providing them with greatly increased protection from vulnerabilities in the operating system. And of course, preventing the use of malicious exploits, which attempt to defeat such protections. So again, not something gamers are likely going to want to enable, especially if it incurs a performance penalty. Now, as noted earlier, I'll be testing with the Core i9-11900K and Core i3-10105F, both of which were installed on the ASUS ROG Strix Z590 eGaming Wi-Fi motherboard using BIOS version 1007. Then for the memory, I've gone with Crucial's Ballistics DDR4 3200CL16 kit, and for the graphics card, the MSI GeForce RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio. As for the testing itself, we're going to look at application, game, storage, and load time performance. All results are based on a three run average, and in some instances, we did power down the entire system between runs to avoid any cached results. Okay, let's get into it. 
Before we jump into the application benchmarks, here's a quick look at the cache and memory latency performance. In short, we see no change or virtually no change in L1, L2 or L3 cache performance with the Intel processors. Where we do see a notable performance difference is when looking at DRAM latency. For the 10105F, the Windows 10 and Windows 11 installs deliver the same results, but enabling VBS does incur a 7% performance penalty, and this will be noticed in memory sensitive scenarios such as gaming. Then with the more powerful 11900K, we see that Windows 10 delivered the best results as the upgrade to Windows 11 increased latency by 5%, though a fresh Windows 11 install only increased latency by 3%. So really a negligible difference there. However, we are again seeing a noteworthy increase with VBS enabled. This time a 9% increase in latency is seen when compared to the Windows 10 configuration. Then moving on to Cinebench R23, we find that the 1100K produced the best result with Windows 10, though we're only talking about a 1% increase over the fresh Windows 11 install. Enabling VBS had a very minor impact on performance here, as we're still looking at a 2% performance variation between the slowest and fastest configurations. And the same is also true for the Core i3. The Blender open data results are very similar to what we just saw when testing with Cinebench R23. Basically the Windows 10 and Windows 11 results are identical, but enabling VBS came with a very minor performance penalty, this time around 3% when compared to what we saw when using Windows 10. Moving on to the 7-zip file manager results, we again see that for the most part, the Core i3 processor is able to deliver the same level of performance using either Windows 10 or 11, with the VBS enabled Windows 11 configuration being the only exception, as here performance dropped by 3%. The margins were slightly larger with the 11900K, and we found that Windows 10 provided the best results. Then upgrading the Windows 10 install to Windows 11 reduced performance by 3%, and then we see that a fresh install did restore some of that performance. Then when comparing the fresh Windows 11 install with VBS enabled, we again saw a 3% performance hit. Testing with Adobe Photoshop 2021 again shows similar performance for all four tested configurations when using the Core i3 processor, and again, enabling VBS resulted in a 3% performance hit. That said, we saw a far more significant 7% performance drop for the 1100K when using VBS. However, when comparing the fresh Windows 10 and 11 installs, performance was much the same. Both the Core i3 and i9 parts delivered the same performance using either Windows 10 or Windows 11 when running Adobe After Effects, though this time we saw a rather significant 10% performance drop with VBS enabled. And then the last application benchmark we're going to look at is based on Adobe Premiere Pro, and again we're looking at virtually identical performance using either Windows 10 or 11, the only exception being when VBS is enabled, and this reduced performance by 12-13%. to 13%. Okay, so time for a few game benchmarks, but please note I'm not going to test dozens upon dozens of games. In fact, I'm not even going to bother testing half a dozen games. Rather, I think you'll get the idea with just a few. So I'm going to show you results for four games, starting with F1 2021. Using the Core i9 11900K, we see that the fresh installs for Windows 10 and 11 delivered the exact same level of performance, and then updating the Windows 10 install to 11 wasn't quite as fast, though we are talking about extremely small margins here. Those margins were slightly increased with the Core i3 part, and here Windows 10 did offer the best results, though again we're only talking about a 3% margin. Now these results are quite interesting, as VBS reduced frame rates by 11-12%, to though the margin is likely exaggerated due to the extremely high frame rates. Those results aside though, we did see identical performance from Windows 10 to Windows 11 using either CPU. Enabling VBS reduced performance in Watch Dogs Legion by up to 8%, seeing we're looking at the 1% low figures. But again, that aside, fresh installs of Windows 10 and 11 delivered the exact same results, while there was a very small performance hit when simply upgrading from 10 to 11. The last game I'm going to look at is Cyberpunk 2077, and here we're looking at an 8-9% to performance hit with VBS enabled. Other than that though, performance is much the same when comparing Windows 10 and 11. Now here's a quick look at Cyberpunk 2077 level load times using the Team Group 8TB MP34Q M.2 NVMe SSD, and here we're looking at no more than a one second difference between the various configurations. So Windows 11 likely won't speed up load times of today's games. Interestingly, Windows 11 was actually slower to load when compared to Windows 10, though the margin when running the 1100K is very insignificant. Where the difference was felt the most was when running the Core i3 processor, as Windows 11 took almost 40% longer to load, though it is worth noting that we're only talking about a mere 3 seconds difference here. Still, for our configuration, Windows 11 didn't improve boot times.
Before wrapping up the testing, here's a look at storage performance with Crystal Dismark. And again, this is based on the Team Group 8TB MP34Q M.2 NVMe SSD. As you can see, read and write sequential performance is much the same regardless of the configuration, so nothing to report here. However, the random QDEP32 results are very interesting. Firstly, Windows 11 is offering quite a massive increase in write performance over Windows 10. Now, I'm not that familiar with SSD testing and I haven't run Crystal Disk Mark in years, but I can tell you that after multiple system resets, the results were repeatable and I did completely fill the brand new SSD before I began testing. So I believe the 20 to 26% performance increase we're seeing here with the 1100K is accurate. I'm just not quite sure why we're seeing such a substantial performance improvement. There was even a 10% uplift for Windows 10 to 11 with the Core i3 processor, despite the results overall being much lower. Then another interesting point to note here is the fact that VBS cripples throughput here, lowering both read and write performance. With the 1100K, we're looking at a 21% drop for read throughput and a massive 58% drop in write throughput. Or another way of putting it, Windows 11's random write performance was almost two and a half times faster with VBS disabled. So there you have it, Windows 11 versus Windows 10 using Intel 10th and 11th gen core series processors for gaming, application and storage performance. For the most part, there is little to no difference between these two operating systems using the hardware in question. And if you are seeing a notable performance drop since upgrading, then it is worth checking to see if VBS is enabled. And I provided these steps on how to do that earlier in the video. It's also well worth noting that for maximum performance, you are best off starting over with a fresh install of Windows 11. And this has really always been the case. And apart from the small performance loss that was often seen with the upgraded install, I also on occasion randomly suffered blue screen crashes when loading Windows 11. That's something that never happened with the fresh install. So again, as always, the upgrade procedure, while very convenient, it can have issues. So again, if you're suffering from stability issues that weren't seen when running Windows 10, and you did upgrade rather than go with a fresh install, there is a good chance that the upgrade process is the source of your trouble. So I'd strongly recommend backing up your personal data, which you probably should do anyway, and starting over with a fresh install of a newly formatted drive. It's not as convenient initially, but perhaps it will result in a few less headaches down the track. So in a nutshell, Windows 11 offers no real performance advantage over Windows 10, with perhaps the only exception being random read-write storage performance, but we won't know if that was limited to our test configuration or not until we conduct further testing. On that note, I am keen to see what Windows 11 does for Intel's upcoming Elder Lake CPUs, as well as a look at Ryzen once the patch that addresses L3 cache performance is officially released. On that note, I will be primarily testing Elder Lake using Windows 11 for my day one review, while I'll be sticking with the Windows 10 data that we already have for previously released platforms, and that of course includes Ryzen, as we've just seen with the 10th and 11th gen core series that shouldn't place them at a disadvantage. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So if you liked it, be sure to give it a like. You can subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to support the Hardware Unbox channel directly and get some really awesome perks in return, then check us out on Floatplane or Patreon. Links for those are in the video description. You get access to our monthly live stream. That's actually coming up uh, Monday next week. So if you're watching this as soon as the video is released, not long from now. Uh, we also do behind the scenes content, Q and A's, uh, and we also have an exclusive Discord server for Hard run box community members. So if you're interested in any of that, do check the links out. Very cool stuff there. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.